Fantastic. Hey, welcome, everybody. So uh, today's uh, webinar is going to basically be on taking Zoho CRM and particularly Zoho Books in the finance suite and talking about some of the basic integration and workflows that come and then some more advanced workflows and automations that we're going to do. Uh, if you don't know us, I'm Brett Martin. I'm the president of Zenata Consulting, and I'm here with Tyler Colt Col or Colt, <laughs> Tyler Colt. We do... Uh, we do a show called the CRM Zen Show. If you've never checked it out, it's a weekly podcast. It's on YouTube at YouTube slash Zanata, or you can go to crmzen.com. And it's a weekly podcast covering everything that happened in the world of Zoho. So every week we run through all the Zoho news and uh, kind of cover everything there. And we're really excited that uh, Zoho asked us to do this and uh, kind of go through uh go through some of our thoughts on these things. So we'll kick it off right away. We're just going to kind of talk a little bit about a standard workflow. Um, for those of you that are more advanced, don't worry. By the time Tyler gets going, uh, we'll, we'll be talking about some other stuff that I think you'll like. So uh, first of all, in this area, I'm just going to talk about basic CRM synchronization between CRM accounts and books contact synchronization, uh, creating an estimate and an invoice and how it all can tie into a deal, how it ties into the whole books, and then that overall visibility back and forth. And we'll kind of talk about maybe some of the best practices in doing that along the way as well. Um, so on this screen, basically we're looking at an account and we're looking at quick copy printing. And as you can tell, we're obviously inside the CRM. And uh, you then if you look over into Zoho Books, you will also see that you have quick copy printing as well. And if you want to, you can even, there's a CRM tab and you can go ahead and you can look at every the entire record basically as it is inside the CRM. Now, one of the interesting things about this is that uh, this will not appear, this Zoho CRM tab, if this contact isn't in the CRM. And sometimes you'll kind of get a lot of duplicates created. And one of the best practices around this is really go ahead and create your accounts inside the CRM. Start that way. It really leads to less trouble down the road. If you do end up with duplicates, it's very easy to deduplicate these accounts, but usually what you'll want to do when you're deduping is figure out which one's in the CRM and kind of make that the main one when you go ahead and merge them. And don't worry, credit cards, all that kind of stuff carries over if you're using books or subscriptions or anything like that. And now we're back in the CRM and we're in the deals module and we kind of want to talk about, you know, some of the, the power of all of this. So if you were to uh, go ahead and click on the Zoho books in the related list. Now, for some people, this is called Zoho Finance. Um, and for some others, it's called Zoho Books. As a matter of fact, I think it's a new thing where the Zoho Books is rolling out. We're starting to see it just in the last few days start to appear in accounts. So it's possible that it'll all be Zoho Books soon. But either way, you're going to see either the Zoho Books related list or you're going to see a Zoho Finance related list. And when you click on that, it basically takes you down to the ability to put in a new estimate, new sales or new invoice. Now, this is because you've got the full integration going back and forth between Zoho Books and CRM. If you have the old version of the CRM, if you have a CRM and you haven't connected finance to it, you're still going to see things like quotes, which is estimates in the CRM, and you'll see invoices, but they're completely different and they're they're totally unrelated to what happens in books. So when you make this connection between books and CRM, you have a couple choices. You can say, hey, I want to get rid of all my old modules. I don't even want to see them anymore. Or I'm just basically going to just go with the Zoho books modules from now on. If you hide them, they're not gone for good. They're just hidden and they're put away. It won't confuse anybody anymore. You won't have any kind of orders up on the top or any of that. You'll just have the Zoho books over the related list. It keeps it pretty clean across the board. So we're going to go ahead and give you an example of making an estimate. So you're in a deal. You want to send an estimate out. You can go ahead and, you know, pull in the customer name and the deal name, go ahead and put some items in. We'll say widget A, widget B. And really what you're doing is you're actually creating this inside of Zoho Books, even though you're inside the CRM. So as soon as you do the save and send, it's actually going to give you a nice little email here. Um, you can person can just click on this to view the estimate and then go ahead and approve the estimate. So it makes it really, really simple. And of course, these templates are customizable. You can make them look any way you'd like. Um, and then when you go ahead and you send that to the client, you'll notice that inside of the CRM, 
under the related list, Zoho Books, under estimates, you now have a new estimate recorded and the status on that is sent. So this is really helpful for salespeople. They don't have access to the finance suite. They don't have access to books, but they want to know the overall status of an estimate as well as potentially an invoice. Is it sent? Is it approved? Is it paid? So all of that can be tracked directly inside the CRM. And now if we go in Basically, we're now inside of the CRM as well. And let's say this estimate was approved. So since it's been, as we can see, accepted on here, we're going to go ahead and convert it. Then we're just going to go ahead and convert it directly to an invoice. And now we can see that the estimate has been moved to an invoice status, and it has now been sent as an invoice over to the customer. And one of the... One of the one of the nice things about that is that, you know, you may have a sales team that might not be doing all of their invoicing themselves. You know, maybe you have an accounts payable team or an accounts receivable team that's going to be actually dealing with a lot of those finance documents. But as long as everything is stored underneath that deal, then whoever that original salesperson is, is going to be able to have visibility and tracking on those records, even if they're not actually the ones uh, sending them out. Yeah, and that's it's so helpful just to have that total visibility into what you're doing. Um, now on this screen, we're going to talk about this a little bit at the end of the webinar, actually in detail at the end of the webinar. But one of the things that we've put in here that is not kind of standard in the CRM to book synchronization is the ability to copy that invoice link and put it inside the CRM. So we actually do this internally. It's kind of nice. You you've got the standard reminders that'll go out out of books, but um, maybe you want to just send, uh, you want to have maybe an email template that's maybe a little nicer reminder. Maybe you're covering something else. Maybe it's at kickoff. Maybe you actually don't click that send invoice, but you just save it as a draft. Then you mark it as sent. So it was never really sent to the customer, but in fact, the the CRM and Zoho Books thinks it was sent. You then can actually take this and embed this in a, hey, thank you so much for your business. Please click here. And the here link would actually be this, this link to go ahead and pay the, to pay your invoice. And then any other things you want in there also, you know, click here to set up a startup call with us, anything that you kind of need. So this also, when it comes down to reminders, uh, maybe you've got a status inside of your deals where you're awaiting payment and you can look at all of the things that are awaiting payment and you can just select five or six of them and just have another email template that says, hey, maybe you forgot, uh, we haven't received your payment yet, click this link to pay and it'll go ahead and pull this link in dynamically. It's kind of a neat thing to do and Tyler will actually take you through that at the end of this on kind of on how to make that work. It's a very small little script. I think it's like eight lines. Mm -hmm. All right. And then once that invoice is paid, as Tyler was talking about, you can see this as paid now inside the CRM. Uh, and a lot of things can happen around this too with another little bit of scripting. As soon as this is paid, we can go ahead and move deal stages along as well. So maybe this was in an awaiting payment stage and now it's been paid. So we're now going to move it to active in production, those kind of things. So by having this integration between books and the CRM, there's just a lot of power that's kind of unleashed uh, between the two products. And then, of course, it was paid there. You can also see over in Zoho Books that it's paid as well. And everything is synchronized and all is right with the world. All right. So with that, Tyler's going to take us through a little bit more now on some customized workflow. Dylan, you want to flip the uh, control over to Tyler? Okay, Tyler, I just passed it over to you. Sweet. Thank you. Alrighty, so now we're going to dig into a little bit more of a customized workflow uh, driving through that same CRM deal record. <clears throat> so a couple key points around, you know, this alternative workflow is, you know, that we're able to, like Brett's kind of mentioning, automate some deal stage updates based on things happening in your invoice records. We're also able to create an invoice using a subform in the CRM rather than actually by, you know, creating it using the little Zoho Books tab. And then last but not least, of course, even following this process and creating it with a custom workflow, we can still actually assign that deal back to, or assign that invoice back to the original deal. So let's go ahead and take a look at another deal here in our CRM. And we'll see that we're starting in this proposal and price quote stage. Um, and we'll see down below that we have a little sub form that looks kind of like an item table uh, for tracking these different items that are sold. Now, you know, the question may be, why would I use this subform 
right? Rather than just creating something as an estimate or as an invoice directly in books. Um, well, there's a couple different reasons. The primary one that we bump into is that oftentimes tables like this need to go into proposal documents, right? Kind of larger scoped out documents, you know, maybe with a bunch of language, maybe with some legalese or value proposition, right? That you're going to send out either for signature, you know, through a DocuSign or Zoho sign, um, you know, and that are going out as, you know, formatted PDFs. And if you're creating these directly in as an estimate, while you can send that through the traditional Zoho flow process, you might not just be able to dress that document up quite like you'll need to. Again, if, if you're sending it more as a proposal than just like a pricing estimate. And sometimes you do a lot with this too. Well, we'll make two subforms on the page because maybe you'll have two different categories of products that are going into a proposal. You'll have an entire services section, which maybe is going to be some recurring revenue. And then maybe you'll have a bunch of, you know, hardware products that are basically just one-time charges, or maybe there's one-time service charges mm -hmm. for installs. And then there's the ongoing. And by breaking these into two separate subforms, you can not only split up two separate invoices, but when you do your pr proposal, you can really neatly break these things down and it, it, yep. it comes in handy. Absolutely. Yeah. Just additional info on top of that as well. Like maybe you have groupings in your products, like widget A is for this part of the project versus, you know, widget B is for this other part. You want to add some custom fields or language around that. You're able to do that and, and have a little more flexibility when you're driving it via this subform. And so now, you know, rather than coming down to our Zoho book section and creating an estimate or an invoice here, we can actually implement up here in the top right, little custom buttons that can do that work for us. Um, so in this case, we've created one called create invoice. And so if I go ahead and just click that button, I'll get a happy little pop-up that says success. Um, and then from there, once I you know take a look at my deal and my screen is refreshed, I'll see a couple things have happened. So first, we've actually updated the stage. Just as part of pressing that button, we now know that we're in a further stage where we're going to be doing a review of the invoice or any final negotiation around that. And what's also happened is we've actually created our invoice down here inside of the Zoho book section. So again, it's coming in here as a draft. Um, you could automatically send this. But oftentimes, if you're doing anything you know, with an automation like that, maybe you want to just take one final look just to make sure that this is all good before you send it out. Um, but again, the key point here is just that you can use a different workflow than the standard flow here through this related list and still get all of your data applied to that correct deal and to that correct account. Um, so they're able to see that down the line. Now, similar to our estimate, we can actually just pull up this record and go ahead and send it out via email just directly to the customer, which will then update our status. And last but not least, of course, finally, when we are paid for this, that will update as well and update that balance down to zero. Um, so this is a really common implementation that we do see just because of the power of those subforms, especially around document creation. That's really kind of when we will most likely use those is if you do need to format and, and label that um, you know table into some type of proposal documentation. And last but not least, we'll see one final little automation here that once that invoice has been marked as paid, we now are able to you know basically apply the new stage for this, defining that it's been closed one. So you know once once we have a payment, then we know that that negotiation and review has been completed. And you know we're ready to consider that we've won this deal. So now we'll kind of do a little walkthrough of some of these automations that go into you know building this type of system. Um, you know I'll kind of walk through these at a base level and highlight where some of the settings are and kind of where you'll need to be to automate some of these actions. And so first we'll go ahead and cover the uh, function that Brett had talked about a little earlier, which is updating that invoice URL and status into the deal record you know, from over in Zoho Books. Um, so all we'll need to do to accomplish this is we'll go ahead and jump into Zoho Books. And up in the top right, we'll pull down our settings. And we'll go down here to this automation section, which kind of is the workhorse here inside of books for developing any of these types of custom actions. 
And so once I pull up my automation section, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and drop in a custom function. Um, you know, when, when you're thinking about writing code or writing any of these scripts, I think it sounds a lot more daunting than it is. Um, you know, oftentimes if you're working from a template, which we'll actually be providing in this, um, in these slides, you know, you can actually figure out and, and get a lot of these things done, um, you know, with a little bit of massaging of, uh, you know, of any of the code. Yeah. And I think, you know, a little shout out here, um, uh, a webinar was done a little while ago with uh, Peter over at, uh, the Workflow Academy. And if you're not familiar with Workflow Academy, I really recommend you check it out. They have got just a basic course on Zoho scripting on Deluge, which is the name of the scripting language. And a lot of people we know have taken it. We've actually sent some of our developers through it, the junior ones that are coming in. And it's a great way. So it's not nearly as difficult, I think, as a lot of people, like you're saying, Tyler, it's not as, it's not as daunting as it would seem. And I think if you start working with sample code, which we're providing here as like a little handout that you can get at the end, uh, it makes life a heck of a lot easier for you. And it really... I mean, I find that, you know, just all the Zoho apps, they integrate so well, but oftentimes, you know, you're wanting to do something that's just a little out of the box, um, like we're talking about here. And anytime you kind of think, gosh, I wish that these at Zoho applications would do this, odds are they can and mm -hmm. they will. And it really wouldn't take that much time to make them do it. It's just, you need to do these kind of things. So go on. Yep. Yeah, and so that, you know, as as much functionality, like you're saying, as much functionality comes out of the box with Zoho, even more is available under the hood, you know, with a little bit of, um, you know, editing and customization to these workflows. So we'll go ahead and create our custom function here. Um, you know, I'll kind of go through this relatively quickly. Basically, we're going to just need to give it a name right up there at the top, and then we'll drop in the specific code that will run this update. Now that actually that snippet there is going to be provided shortly. So we don't really need to dig in too much to, you know, each individual line there, but we'll see that, you know, it's really just about nine lines of code that define a couple different values and then use them to write over to the deal. Um, and does anything need to be changed on this Tyler, this code, if basically if this is dropped in and they follow, will this work across the no, board? No, you could do the exact same thing. The only things to be aware of are whatever the name of your uh, invoice link field are and whichever stage name you want to update to. So in line seven and eight there, those would be really the only places that you may need a couple edits. And so once we have our function created, we can go ahead and make a workflow rule. Um, you know, workflow rules are pretty consistently used across most Zoho applications. You can think about them pretty much like an if then statement. So if this certain thing happens, then, you know, run this function or then send this email, right? And so we'll go ahead and create a new workflow rule up here in the top, right? We'll go ahead and give it a name and decide which module this is going to trigger in. So examples would be, you know, this workflow is going to run on you know, an estimate or an edit to a sales order or, you know, the sending of an invoice. And, you know, there's kind of a few key components when we're making a workflow. First, we're setting up our trigger. So this is our if. So if our invoice is edited, and specifically here, we're going to look at the status. So if our status is edited, and we only want to do this if status is sent. So once we basically update status such that the value is sent, then we'll define what we want to do and we'll just choose that custom function that we just made. So again, kind of our first two options here are, are, are what create our if. So if it's edited to be sent, then we'll run this action. <clears throat> and this action, it will just, you know, trigger that function that we've just created um, down in our custom function section. And, and you want to be sure to do it just once, not every time. Just once, yeah, just <laughs> once. Um, there's oftentimes an option in these for uh, running every time that something happens, but it's not common that you want to do that. Um, and if you're working in CRM, the uh, workflows in CRM give you that same option to do it just once or every time. And you, you know, oftentimes will have people call us and they've kind of set it to every time and that's pretty much mostly <laughs> never what you want to do because then yep. it's just firing off all the time. There was an example once where, you know, someone had an automation that sent a customer an email when the deal was closed one, thanking them for their business, but it was triggering every time the record was edited 
after it was closed one. So their whole implementation process was sending, you know, repeat emails. So you want to be a little careful when you set these up um, just to make sure that you're really triggering on the right action. But they were very thankful for the business. <laughs> they were very, very thankful. <laughs> and here we went ahead and dropped this code in in text. Um, you know, I won't really spend too much time laboring over the actual content of the code. But in essence, we're just kind of grabbing a couple IDs for our invoice and our potential. And then we're defining some values to go ahead and update that deal um, that we've just kind of called out or defined. And so next, we'll kind of dig into the more complicated function that's running uh, in our little demo here for the subform to invoice. Again, we're not going to spend a ton of time on the code itself, but just how to set up this type of workflow in CRM. So first, we'll go ahead and jump into the settings here, wrench and screwdriver up in the top right. And we'll go into our modules and fields. We'll select deals. And then we'll go to our links and buttons and create a new button. Now, so these are the steps to actually create one that's triggered on a button press. Um, you know, you could use the CRM has a version of workflow rules, very similar to like in books, where you're triggering on a certain field being updated or a certain parameter being met. But in this case, you know, we coded this in just as a custom button. And so once we do that, we'll go ahead and choose where we want to place it. Uh, we're in this case, we're going to place it on the view page. So just when you're looking at that deal, and then we'll choose what we want this button to do. So if you have some existing functions, you can choose one of those. Um, you could have it open up a URL. In this case, we'll go ahead and choose writing function and we'll just write one into the system uh, for this button. So the next thing it's going to want you to do is to give it a name. It's important to make these descriptive um, or else you will end up very confused when you've written a handful of these. And um, you know if they're not named clearly, you'll kind of lose track of what's doing what. So I want to make it really informative and clear, especially so that if anyone in the future is working on the system, you know, they can infer what any of these actions are going to do just based on the name. So for this one, we'll go ahead and call it exactly what it is, which is creating a books invoice. Now, it would have been more descriptive if you said from, from subform, wouldn't it? It could I mean, be more descriptive if yes. you said from subform. <laughs> And now jumping into our function here, the first thing we're always going to do when we're writing a function in the CRM is click this Edit Arguments button. And we'll go ahead and define on the left here our deal ID, which is just our name for the value. And on the right, we'll go ahead and define what that value is. So we're just going to pull in the ID of the deal. Um, the ID, for those who don't work with code a lot, is just a long series of numbers that is unique to each deal record. So Zoho just creates one behind the scenes and it gets used a lot for identifying a unique deal out of your lists of you know, active deals. Yeah, anytime you're in the CRM, if you look up in the URL bar, whether you're in a, if you're in a contact or in an account, you're in a lead, you're in anything, you'll see a long string of numbers after that. And that is actually the record ID. And that's what's used across the board kind of for doing any of this kind of stuff. Yep. And then, so once we have this defined, we'll go ahead and run our function. And again, we won't dig into this, but it is available in the code. The one thing I will highlight, if I go back to this page, it's going to be really tempting to go to the right there and click plus and define more variables manually like this. But you really don't want to do that for when you get into testing and making any future edits. You always just want to define the ID of the record where you're starting. So if it's triggering in the deal, I'll get the deal ID. If it was triggering in a contact, I would get that contact ID. And it'll make life a lot easier once you get into testing. And so again, without digging too much into this function here, once we have it written in, we'll go ahead and save up in the top right. You can also save and execute if you want to test the function. And it's just going to ask you for the deal ID for the record that you want to test on. Um, and so in this, you know, basically, in, as a short story, this function will go ahead and get the information about the account on file for that deal. It'll go and find the matching account over in books. It will look at the subform and basically correlate each item in the subform to its version over in books. 
And then it just compiles the data into the format that it needs to go ahead and create the invoice. This function here is going to be basically exactly the same for your system, other than just updating the organization ID and again, maybe a couple names of fields. Last but not least, we'll go ahead and save this button, which basically opens it up for use for the rest of the team. And then here again, kind of for your copy and paste later, uh, we did go ahead and provide this function. Um, you know, in all of its glory that will go ahead and create those invoices for you just directly from the deal record. And what would they need to look for as far as things that they may want to change? Things you want to change would be your organization ID. We just put a dummy organization ID in for this function. It's just a unique identifier for your books company in essence. Um, other than that, most of this should be pretty much standard other than your API name for products sold. Um, the deal products, it might depend on whatever you called your subform, and then the names of fields that are in the subform. But everything else should be basically the same. All right. So I think now we're going to move on to some Q&A, Dylan. Yeah. Um, so I am going to, let's see, can I take control? Yes, I can just take it from you. Okay. I've taken back over the session. Um, so now we can do Q&A. So if you have any questions on what you just heard uh, for Brett or Tyler, go ahead and pop them in uh, the questions module. Or, you know, since I feel like we don't have too many coming in, it's not overwhelming, I'll even let you put them in the chat. Um, all the rules, Dylan. And while you're thinking of your questions, there's just a couple things that I wanted to plug that are some helpful resources for you guys. So first one, zoho.com slash events. So in a normal non-pandemic year, this would be the page where you go to see where all of Zoho's live events are around the world. But it also has links to every single Zoho product that offers webinars. So if you go to that page and you scroll down, um, let's say you're a Zoho One user, but right now you're focused on you know, building out your CRM automation. You can scroll down, you can see, oh, CRM has its own webinars that are just about CRM. Click on that, and then you can find more webinars uh, with a lot of more great resources. So that's super useful. Also, I wanted to plug the Zoho One guides. So this is some kind of new content that we put up on the Zoho One website. I have written like half of them. <laughs> um, so Zoho One guides just kind of like give you a introductory guide to usually some kind of like business process. Um, so it teaches you, you know, okay, this is what I'm trying to do with my business. Which applications do I actually need to turn on? Where should I go first? And what are some of the features that I would want to look at? So if you're just getting started with Zoho One, that's going to be very useful for you. Um, but now let's go ahead and take a look at some of these questions. Um, and maybe we can just project some of these. So, so Todd asked this a while ago, and I have been a little distracted answering some of the other ones. So I don't know if you guys actually responded already, but uh, can you run work in progress reports for a larger contracted project that spans over a few months to compare accrued costs versus billings? So this would be looking at, um, you're talking kind of more like a service deal. You're going to implement a series of products and services at a location or kind of something where it's um, like billing over time based on work completed. Because uh, if so, what you can do is, uh, we oftentimes use Zoho Analytics for this. Um, and what I'll do is basically pull Zoho Projects data and Zoho Finance or Zoho Books data into one shared environment. And as long as your projects and your you know, books accounts are all kind of linked up under that CRM account, oftentimes it really becomes a CRM account that's key for tying everything together because you have projects at CRM and then CRM to books. And what you can do in that case is basically roll up all of your projects time, uh, either time billings or you know, just worked time, even if it's unbillable to get your cost and then any of your expenses related to the project, which they actually just recently rolled out uh, integration for expense directly with projects. 
Um, I think we talked about it on the show a couple of weeks back. I haven't had a chance to play around too much, but um, yeah, so you'd, you'd probably need <coughs> to pull a work in progress report like that over from Zoho Analytics, just because it's going to give you the best place to marry all of that data together. Yeah, and, and you know, it's not just that it has to be from those. I mean, you can really pull, I think, anything into analytics, Tyler. I mean, so for yeah. our for when we keep track of this internally, I'll use that as an example. Uh, we have a custom creator app that tracks time. We have time tracked in projects. We have time tracked in the CRM. We have billings that are tracked in various methodologies um, because sometimes they're paid over time and there's different things we want to look at things. There's a lot of costs that are associated with a different project. You know, we want to get down to what the actual gross margins and net margins are on, on all of the work that we do. And the only way to do that is to pull it all into analytics and then you know analyze it that way. And that way you can aggregate it all and get the numbers you're looking for. So that's probably gonna be your best way to go, Todd. All right, awesome. Um, so next question here, this one's from Sean. Um, you mentioned the sub form being helpful when you wanna create a more robust and content heavy proposal. Can you talk a bit more about how you utilize the sub form to create these? Yeah, Brett, do you want to jump in there? Yeah, sure. So uh, the mail merge feature inside the CRM, basically a lot, when you go into settings and you go into templates, you have an option to do an email template or you can do quote templates that's using the internal quote, or you can do mail merge templates. When you click on a new mail merge template, what that's actually going to do is take you into Zoho Writer and allow you to create a beautiful custom document. And if you don't follow Zoho Writer, it just gets better almost on a daily basis. It's it's crazy, the stuff they're doing with it. And last week, they had a huge rollout that's especially big when it comes to doing proposals. Um, yeah, so you can create your complete custom document there. And then you have the ability to have merge fields. So you pretty much can pull. So if you're associating the... Uh, new merge document you're going to create with, let's say a deal, you have to choose what module you're going to associate it with. And then link to that deal is a contact and an account, maybe something else. You basically have access to all those fields. You have access to all the fields in the deal, all the fields in the account, all the fields in the contact, and you can pull all of them into this proposal. So either, you know, the company name, any information you need, if it's a contract, maybe you want to pull the address in, maybe you've got some details around the account. There's just so much you can do with it. Um, and one of the things that was rolled out, I want to say about a year and a half ago, subforms have been around now going on almost three years. Um, and over time, they've slowly been rolling out what you can do with them. But um, about a year and a half ago, I guess you can now pull subforms directly into a presentation. And you can choose what columns you want to display and what's that going to look like or directly into your writer document. And then once you go ahead and save that, uh, you then, when you're inside of a deal, you will just go up and you'll click on the, like the, the three little buttons there and you'll say, or I think it's it now says more, it's actually says more now mm -hmm. and you click on more and you'll just say, you want to do a, uh, you know, a, a, a merge, a web, a, what do they call it, Tyler? It's a, uh, mail merge. mail merge. So you want to do a mail merge. You click on mail merge. It's going to ask you what document you want to choose for the mail merge. And then it's going to take you to a blank page where you can kind of view the document. It's not going to be merged yet. You just want to make sure it's okay. You click merge. Then it's going to take all those fields, merge them, give you a beautifully created document, which you still can put some final edits on if you want. Um, and the beautiful thing from there also is if you have Zoho Sign right up at the top, you have the ability under deliverability to choose Zoho Sign. And you can even just send it directly out for Zoho Sign. Uh, so much power to it. So anyway, that's one of the ways to put subforms into a proposal. Awesome. Um, let me see what else we got here. Um, so Dion asks... Uh, I use projects in Zoho Books. Can I automatically create a Zoho Books project when a deal reaches a certain stage and use concatenation of the CRM account and deal name as the project name? Yep. Um, you, pretty much when you're when you're working with the API between Zoho CRM and Zoho Books, um, you can pretty much, I'll say pretty much just to be safe, but pretty much anything that you can do as a user there is a way for us to call that action in a function. So like if you are, you know, you can make a workflow when your deal hits that stage, right? 
as a user, I could, you know, copy the deal name and copy the account name and concatenate them. So I can have the script do that. And we would go and find that the, the same account or same contact over in Zoho books, and then just organize that data to create the specific project. Um, so yeah, it wouldn't be an issue. Be a little bit of massaging. It depend on if you need a couple custom fields or anything specifically to go into that project record. Um, but yeah, I mean, at a baseline level, it, there should be no issue in doing that. Um, you might, you may need to make an API call rather than use the CRM um, integration or books integration actions that are in the um, kind of default settings of Deluge. You know, like create record. You, know, you might actually have to hit an endpoint to to do that action. But um, where there's a will, there's a way. So Tyler, I think you just should have stopped at yep and left Dion wanting more. <laughs> <laughs> what else we have, Dylan? Um, let's see. There was one I was just looking at. Okay, so Wes asked, uh, we have a business selling products which are sold for a set contract amount. Can Zoho Books use a weighted calculation for each item to determine how much of the contract value to bill for that item? So Wes, I don't think we can do that automatically, but that would be a use case for writing a deluge function uh, that could uh, handle what you're looking for there. Do you guys have more to add on to that? Are you talking, I think he's talking proration, right? I mean, I think it's like, if you have a contract, if you have a set contract amount, that's like $10,000 and a variable amount of items that are under that, how much, Uh. Should you bill for each thing? I think that's what they meant. Hmm. Well, I mean, if you had, if you knew the total, like basically if you're doing a contract deal and what you're saying is basically that you've sold this on a contract, not knowing every specific item that needs to go into that contract. And over time, you're going to basically layer on these items. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could, you would have to do with a function, but you, you could basically sum all of the, uh, items in the function to get the total item value, the total like default item value, and then take a percent based on the unit price of each item to basically assign like contracted percent value for each individual line item, then multiply that percentage by the actual contract amount that might live in your deal um, to create those. Because one of the things that's interesting when we're creating invoices from the uh, from Deluge you know, you have all of your standard, you know, MSRP, MSRP or sales prices for items. But when I'm creating an invoice in a function, I can put whatever value we need in there, right? So th- those are kind of your baseline sales prices, but they can always be overruled by, you know, an action in a function. Okay. And then um, got a question from Dave who asked, can you trigger workflows from a subform? Can you now search fields in a subform? Um, triggering workflows, uh, kind of. So not directly. Like there's no workflow trigger for new subform row added, but there are workarounds for that. Um, so you can actually have in a subform like a, an aggregate field. So you know at the bottom of mine with which day and which it be, I had a total price field. So. I can't trigger a workflow on a new line being added, but I can trigger one anytime that that total price is updated. So it's an imperfect match. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised uh, that if that becomes a thing down the line with with subforms triggering workflows. But as of now, it's not direct. You kind of have to you have to do a workaround on that. Can you search, Tyler? I know we can report on subforms now, but can we search a subform? I don't know off the top of my head. I don't think it's so. It's been a while since I've tried that. Yeah, I don't, Last I don't time think so. I checked, you couldn't. Um, yeah, also like Zoho Creator also has a subform feature, which does allow you to trigger actions based on a new row being added. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes this gets into a decision. I'll just chime in before we go to the next one between using a subform and using a related record to the deal. Um, you know, if you're needing, if, if each like, you know, line, if each line on that subform is really kind of its own entity that has an entire workflow around it, you might want to break that out into a related list, uh, meaning like a custom module that links to the deal. Um, really everything that we talked about, like creating invoices, creating proposals, you can also do that with a related module. We often use subforms because they're just easy to use. It's all kind of on one page. Um, but yeah, if, if there is some kind of workflow 
and process around each line item that might be where you want to break it out into a custom module. And you can still get all of the benefits of a subform, such as subtotals and totals and all of that. You just have to write custom functions that are reading the related list to pull that up into the main, the main record. Uh, yep. But then that gives you everything you're looking for here. You can trigger workflows, you can search, kind of the, the, the missing things. All right, this one should be a softball. Uh, do you guys have experience working with nonprofits or offer a nonprofit rate? Yes, and yes. <laughs> we do both. Okay. Yes. Um, and then I wanted to go back to Ray's question. Um, so just maybe we can kind of review this again, but how do you populate subforms with the list of items from a proposal? Is there a way to automate this? Well, it depends. Um, you wouldn't be able to take it from a proposal to a subform. Um, cause once it's in that proposal in writer, it's kind of just living as a text or a PDF document. You'd have to go from your subform into the proposal using mail merge, um, there's one little thing to highlight on that, but once once you have that subform filled out in the deal, then you know it's just a few clicks away to um, you know create that proposal document and send it out. Oh, a question from Andre. We bumped into this one before. Sure, I'll put that one up. So if we have many different sales reps in the CRM, they can only currently send an estimate using the super admin email and signature. Um, yeah, this is one where you, you basically have to set them up in books and chime in, Brad. I know you fix this a couple of times for people. Yeah. We have to set them up in books and then set them up as a sender, right. To make their name and email address available. Correct. And depending on what you want to do, oftentimes what you'll, if you don't want to do that also, you can just create a, you can still send as them, but you'll need to, um, Actually, no, you're right. You will need to send them up in books, but you just want to set them up as timesheet users. And then what you're going to need to do is uh, sometimes make different estimates just for them, um, especially if you're trying to change some information around. So there's a whole bunch of weird little ways of going around it, but uh, you can get around it. If you want to shoot me an email, I can uh, run you through that. It's pretty quick. Okay. And then... Um... We got another question from Kathy, which is in the chat area. Um, can you create a proposal based on the department and different jobs so that it will convert into Zoho Books as a job cost report? I don't know. Job cost report. And off the top of my head, it would depend on what you're doing. So if you if you're using like a sub form and you had fields for department field for like job name or job type, right? I mean, as long as, as long as there's an API endpoint, then we can pretty much create any record over in books, um, to create it under the job cost report, you would have to fill them in as expenses. Right. Um, see, so yeah, I don't know that would maybe require a little bit more, uh, understanding on my end. I'm not hundred percent sure. Yeah, I just was reading it offline here. I, I don't know. I don't think so. All right. And then we got a question from Pinder. Is there a way to calculate slash automate commissions for the salesperson based on percentage off of amounts on the deal closed? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you, if, if your commission um, calculations are relatively simple, like they're just getting a flat percent on one deal amounts, then you can do it with like a formula field, right? And then pull some summary table reports and things like that directly through the CRM. If things are a little bit more complicated, where commission might be based on, you know, multiple different parameters, or maybe you're doing commission on specific items, right? And they have their own commissionable rates. Then sometimes we'll pull that data over into Zoho Analytics, where we're able to uh, pre-process the data with all those types of logic and calculation that you'll need to get the value. But as a baseline, it, you know, if they're just getting a percent on uh, one deals, then a formula field should totally get the job done for you. And then you can just put together a summary report inside of the CRM that you know, basically shows you commissions for last week or last two weeks, whatever your you know, pay period would be. Yeah. But kind of like Tyler said, if you've got, like, we have one client where every product has a different commission level associated with it and salespeople earn different commissions based on who they are, based on each product. 
Um, so mm -hmm. you've got a couple ways of handling that. One, the way we currently do it for them has been in analytics, which makes it extremely easy for them to see that in real time. But you also yeah. can do, we've done it, another way to do this is to do a custom creator app where you enter every person, you enter their commission data and you kind of put it all in that creator application and then you can you can pull everything Refer into to it. Yeah. yeah, and then you can pull everything into there. Yeah, one, one final note about, again, if it is more complicated than just one field, an advantage to doing it in analytics is that you don't have to have those fields on the page in the CRM. So you get to keep your layout as clean as humanly possible and just let analytics do this work on the reporting end rather than on the front end. Um, so a couple of advantages to doing it in the reporting suite. Um, <clears throat> Good advice, yeah. guys. Um, all right, so this is one of the earlier questions from Bonnie. Will you cover the integration between Zoho Books and QuickBooks? I don't think there is one, but correct there, me if I'm wrong. There sure. is for Zoho inventory. Okay. Um, yeah. Interestingly enough, there, yeah, the connection actually runs to Zoho inventory. Um, if I can, I think I can probably put this in the chat. I'll go ahead and drop the link to Zoho's guide on this in the chat just so you can check that out in the meantime. We don't have anything planned on that as of now, um, but this should be a good place to get started. Uh, looks like it's basically syncing invoices and bills. So just your like accounting and you know either AR and AP records over to QuickBooks. Um, and there's some really simple integrations. I'm assuming you're talking QuickBooks Online. Yes. There are some real simple integrations over in Zoho Flow, um, but not really recommended right now. Um, but I think you can do that. And I'll give a shout out to uh, ZBrains. Uh, ZBrains is another Zoho partner. And they've spent a lot of time building connectors, not only to QuickBooks Online, but to QuickBooks uh, Desktop. So they've got some interesting stuff that they're doing there. So depending on the level of integration, I mean, it's a more expensive solution, but I think they're doing full real synchronization and all sorts of things on that end. So there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a whole bunch that, that can occur there. Yeah. Um, and if you're, if you're on Zoho one, you know, like even if you're not using Zoho inventory, that could be a good pathway to integrate it just because it is pre-built, it's built by Zoho. Um, you know, and so really when you, if you're doing all of your workflow inside of books, the main things that really do need to go into QuickBooks are just your invoices and bills. So it could be a good um, solution for you to use something off the shelf like that. Okay, and then we have a question from Cody. So is it possible to write a custom function that pulls order line items from a Shopify order and associates those products with corresponding customer in CRM? Um, if those orders are going into the CRM. So, you know, there's there's a... It's made by Zoho. There's a connector for Shopify to the CRM where Shopify orders flow in as sales orders. Um, if you are using something like that that gets them into the CRM, then absolutely. Um, that script, I will say, will be a little bit trickier because you have to read a list, a list of all the products on the, um, on the sales order. But it is definitely possible to do, um, again, as long as they're coming into the CRM. Directly from Shopify, you would need to actually make an API call on their end. Um, and we don't do that type of work ourselves. I'm, I'm assuming it's possible. It's got to be. But if you're doing it in Deluge, it'll just have to come in as a sales order first, uh, likely just using an off-the-shelf product to integrate them. All right. Um, just checking the chat. OK. Uh, <laughs> best resources to learn Deluge analytics flow and custom functions. Um, um, yeah, we've got a webinar on analytics. I think you were probably going to plug, uh, workflow. Yeah, Academy. I was going to plug workflow Academy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, work, uh, workflow Academy is fantastic. And then, um, I think for yeah analytics, I would check out our webinar. I think mm -hmm. you're right, which you can just go to uh, YouTube slash Zanata. Yeah, we haven't done too many like videos on teaching deluge and custom functions, really just because I don't think it's a great way to learn them. You really just have to like try, you know, same, same with flow. Like you just have to try and fail and try and fail over and over and over again. Like before I was a Zoho consultant, I was just a user of Zoho. And that's basically what I did. I wanted to automate the system. And I had no idea what I was doing. 
So I just Googled and tried and Googled and tried. I will say now with, with pro or, um, platforms like the Workflow Academy, uh, they did a webinar on analytics, I think last week. Um, that's a great way to structure that process a little bit where it's, you know, the teaching, you're doing practice problems. Um, it keeps it pretty lightweight. I think it's a great place to start. Also, Pure Deluge, if you're looking for that, there's a website called Udemy, um, and they sell courses. And a Zoho partner out of Australia by the name of Jeremy Nagel has written a course mm -hmm. called Deluge on a Luge. Um, and that, for the longest time, was our best go-to for, for that. And that's actually mm -hmm. a very good Pure Deluge course. Yep. A little more technical, I would say, than Workflow yep. Academy. But... He'll dive you. He's going to send you off in directions like go over here and learn JavaScript and do this, but he's going to give you all these various <laughs> things to do. But um, at the end, you can write Deluge. Yep. Yeah. The uh, the Workflow Academy course on learning Deluge. I haven't gone through the whole thing, but I did watch a bit of one of their free videos is on writing your first CRM custom function. It's a really good intro. If you've never done stuff like that before, it's a really mm -hmm. good way to just get in there and make stuff happen pretty quickly. Um, all right. I think we're just going to close out the last couple questions here and then we'll end the webinar. So um, using books, is there a way to get the record ID and ship to information from a PO purchase order? I need to get them into an email notification. Um, where there's a will, there's a way. So if you, if you have that PO, you can definitely get record ID and you can get ship to info. Uh, the question would be, where's that email going to come from? Um, you know, with, with deluge, I will say, um, to send a well formatted email in deluge is a heavier lift. It's doable. Uh, our senior consultant, Josh does some wizardry that I've yet to understand where he can format data and actually send pretty emails. A simple way to do this would be to pull it into some type of CRM record, like on creative, a PO, you just send a function in that creates, you know, those a, two fields. Yeah. Like a PO information record against that CRM account. And then you could just have that trigger just a CRM email template. Uh, if you want to get real fancy though, you know, you could dive in and try to send it with the function itself, but um, getting it formatted into like pretty HTML is just going to be a, a tricky one to figure out. Yeah. So Deluge has built in send email task. Um, but the reason that it's so challenging to make it look pretty is that you're pretty much just sending a plain text email. And mm -hmm. so if you want to do any formatting, then you have to write the HTML in that email that will format it. Yeah. And then you're writing that HTML and concatenating it with <laughs> your <Yeah>. other <laughs> variables that you're pulling to get that information. So it just becomes very um, messy and difficult yeah. to look at. It is powerful though. Like for example, one of the things that we do after a call with one of our clients, we have a list of action items that just go in as like a, you know, item one, item two, item three. And with a function, again, all credit to Josh, if he listens to this later, um, he basically figured out a way to take that list apart and turn it into an HTML bulleted list all in deluge and actually send that out as an email. So it, it's definitely doable, but again, it's just, uh, it's a little bit of black magic. All right, and then I think this will be the last question I'll project up here. This is one really meant for you guys. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, should you want to read the question? Any initial impressions over the new Sure Payroll integration with Zoho Books? Uh, the reason I like it is because it's basically paychecks. Um, so my initial impressions are great. I haven't tried it yet because that's a process, but um, I think it's... Um, I think it's a great step. I'd love to see this for ADP, paychecks themselves, all the others. Um, it's uh, I can't tell you if it's worth switching. I don't know anything about Gusto Payroll. Um, I can tell you, though, that uh, this is like the first pure play integration with a payroll company. Um, and I think Sure Payroll also does 1099s because up until this point in time, you kind of had to, to break them out or just use a separate payroll company and basically do a journal entry every week. Um, mm -hmm. So... Um, I'm excited about it, but uh, we have not had a chance to play with it. But I think it's—I uh, think it bodes well. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for answering all these questions. Um, Steve just asked, "Will there be a link to the recording?" So yes, we will be sending out 
the recordings via email. It may not come until like tomorrow or a couple days, but just keep an eye out. We will be sending it. If you want to get in touch uh, with Brett or Tyler, um, these are all their links. I'm going to leave this up on screen for a moment for those of you who want a screenshot or write any of these down. Um, the kids tell me you need to go to youtube.com slash Zanata and mash that subscribe <laughs> button, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, remember to like and sub, mash the sub. That still doesn't feel quite right it, to say it that. Doesn't, it's I'm not annoyed. right. <laughs> <laughs> And hit the bell to be um, constantly annoyed by notifications. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I couldn't help but noticing in the chat that two Dion's separated by maybe thousands of miles have found each other. So I'm glad that <laughs> <laughs> we have united the two Dion's. <laughs> um, so thank you guys all for coming. And uh, yeah, that's all we got.